in a world where a voice onset time continuum are synthesized using PROT, we can create stimuli with voice onset times starting at 70, gradually shortening, down to 10, even 0, where the burst and vowel start at the same time. But what is that? Is there a brick wall stopping us from going beyond 0? What lies on the other side? Today, we're going beyond the wall. Buckle up, my friends. There is pre-voicing ahead. Uh, hmm. Okay, then. Well, to make a voicing continuum that includes pre-voicing, we're going to use the same script as before. Let's run it. This time, I'm going to use sounds dime and time to create the continuum. And now let's dig into these parameters. I still want seven steps, but instead of going between 10 and 70 milliseconds, let's go between minus 60 and 70 milliseconds. Everything else I'm going to keep at the default values, except we're not going to save anything, because as you know by now, we're going to talk about saving later. Okay, so the voiced onset sound is dime. I'm going to select that. The voiceless onset sound is time. We'll select it. And we got to select our landmarks. All right, so let's zoom in and find the right landmark. Onset of this aspiration is right around here. The end of the aspiration is right about where it's clicked right there. All right. And then the onset of the vowel. Here we go. Let's click right there. All right, it's going to do some work and present us with a continuum. So let's see what it produced. At the voiceless end, here's what we have. Time. All right, sounds like a good time. And at this end. Dime. 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 So let's zoom into that. What we have before the burst is this little blip of energy. And so this is our pre-voicing. Let's zoom way in. And it looks like. Yep, 60 milliseconds. Looks like the script worked, but you know, there are some complications. The complication is when this is creating pre voicing, what it does is it goes into that voiced onset sound, it selects the onset of the vowel, and then just shifts it over in time so that it starts before the burst. It does a little bit of amplitude shaping and then just pre appends it before the burst. So as you can see, in a sound with true pre-voicing, as this original naturally spoken speech sound has, it looks a little bit different than what we ended up with in the outcome of the script. So let's compare them. Here's the output of the script on the left, and we have something that looks a little bit more complex than real pre-voicing on the right. And the reason for this is, if you're working with a sound that doesn't have true pre-voicing, you essentially have to make up some sound. And so what I tried to do is make up the sound by using what's currently available, which should sound like it's coming from the same vocal tract, and so therefore should be pretty appropriate to pre-append right before the burst. So it's a little bit complex, it's a little bit made up, but if you need to demonstrate pre-voicing for, say, a classroom demonstration, or just to tell someone what is pre-voicing, this could be a way to do it. For the purposes of making stimuli for a perceptual experiment, you might want to be cautious because this isn't real pre-voicing. It's just a way to make up pre-voicing when you don't have it at hand.